Greg has been making some content recently. It's been less uh, sort of conspiracy theory stuff, kind of. It's been really him living out and not not quite understanding that capitalism is the problem, uh, but sort of understanding it. But now he's come out with a new video, and this one is Ancient Underground City Mystery, which sounds promising. This sounds deeply promising. I am hoping that this is... There's there's one of two ways that I will be excited about an Armor Skeptic video. Um, if he gets more into the conspiracy theory, his, his sort of grand unifying, you know, green man, electromagnetosphere, he's actually Jesus thing... Um, Sort of grand conspiracy. I love that. Or if he comes out of it on the other side, be like, whoops, I was wrong. I should just be a leftist. Um, there's a lot of people who <laughs> who will instead make fancy, crazy ideas. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so this is it. Ancient underground city mystery. Or maybe he'll convert all of us. Maybe, we'll, maybe suddenly it'll be the armored skeptic to... Uh, being a Catholic pipeline, like was prophesized. In 1963... Uh oh it's blue now. It's not green. Deeply alarming. What is he signaling to us? Okay, I need to... I need to know... I feel like he is a person that would try to do symbolism. Is he blue? Blue man? Damn. Maybe. Blue balls. Wait. Blue is sadness. Blue is sadness. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe he just likes the shirt. But I'm guessing it is. Well, he's been wearing the green shirt, so this is just why. Now I'm on a Greg conspiracy theory. I'm like... The, the conspiracy theory that I'm on is how many conspiracy theories is Greg up to? Like, is this a conspiracy theory thing he's doing? Like, is he doing symbolism all the time? What is he trying? What is he trying to? Do? Because he's been, uh, if you haven't watched any of this series, what he has been doing is, in my opinion, ad hoc. My saying, corn is so moist that it's actually <laughs> dripping. Not that he has not been saying that. Uh, ad hoc, he has been saying like, uh, ooh, I've always, I've always been meaning to come to this. Uh, stuff I've been seeding the the path the whole time. I've been I've been drip feeding you information. I've I've actually been you know ahead of the game forever. Um, I don't know though. The mannequin has different underwear too, and the underwear were part of one of his deals. Wait. Oh shit! The underwear means stuff. Okay. <laughs> A man in Turkey trying to renovate his basement accidentally stumbled upon a secret More. passageway hidden behind his wall. More. He followed the tunnel and then found a large cavernous room with even more tunnels branching off of it. What he discovered was the ancient underground city of Darren Kuyu the oldest underground city ever found. Believed to be built sometime in the 8th century BC. That's somewhere around pretty 9 cool. or 10,000 years ago. And Neat. That's pretty rad. This city was supposedly home to around 20,000 people. It would have been difficult enough to build a city out of stone above ground 10,000 years ago, mm -hmm. but to carve an entire city out of stone under the earth and yeah. haul that material up to the surface that would have been a monumental undertaking yeah is so the ancient aliens propensity i hope he doesn't go with like well i couldn't have done this <laughs> uh oh so here's the question why build a city underground at all? Why move thousands of tons of rock through thousands of meters of tunnel so an entire peoples can live under the surface of the earth? It wouldn't be so that they can. It's it so you're you're it's it's reverse. Uh, so the mechanism here isn't the desire to have twenty thousand people in a place for them to stay. You didn't have twenty thousand people before you had the shelter. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, like, clearly 
a situation where uh, they move in, they're able to chip away and expand at this, and then suddenly they find themselves using some of the natural formations to make a habitable, safe place for them to stay where they can, you know, keep predators out. It didn't take a lot of, you know, building expertise or anything. They just had to chip away. I'm sure it had lots of complications. I'm sure if you look at it, it isn't very structurally sound, and there's a reason that it's an empty city uh, where people didn't live for a long period of time after the fact. Cool. Um, they're not always super viable. A lot of problems with flooding and stuff like that can happen. Uh, they were all gamers and wanted no natural light. I mean, imagine if you found a cave... And, and there's no civilization anywhere. Imagine uh, the alien planet of Earth. It's deeply habitable to you because you evolved here. Um, and there's lots of stuff you can eat, but there's lots of predators. There's lots of places. You find a place where you can dig in, you and your family and clan or whoever the fuck is with you because, you know, we're, we're pack animals. Cool. Uh, and, you know, we're very we're highly social. We cooperate together. And you just chip away at this relatively soft material. Like it's stone, yeah, but it's not like... You, know, you can chip away. Uh, <clears throat> that's racist disbelief of historical achievements on your bingo card, folks. Yeah, pretty normal stuff, probably. Um, anyway, this is, like, deeply understandable. Humans have been doing this stuff forever. When it would take less effort and be more practical to live above the surface. No, and more importantly... It wouldn't be more practical. Oh, my God. So this is with like your, the 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 modern interpretation of like having the context of the different ways that humanity has survived throughout the world, and then ignoring the fact that this person had no context for the other ways people do stuff and found this and it was working. Like, can you can you blame an early like we're talking pre civilization human beings out in the open wilderness? That look exactly like we look now, just dirty and shit. Because this was not super long. This is 8,000 years ago. This is not a crazy long period of time for a species. Uh, some light Googling. It was used by people fleeing marauding groups and considered it soft sedimentary rock in an area with few trees. It's not a difficult build. Right. And I'm sure that it wasn't defensible for long term and it may have had other issues depending on the weather. Does he not realize how hard building a house would be? He has no fucking clue, dude. <laughs> how did humans 10,000 years ago figure out how to build such an intricate right. underground city thing, in though. the first place? Where did that knowledge come from? Doing it. From doing it. You think it was lasers? That it's not sense. only the oldest underground city, but it's also one of the largest and most complex that we've ever found. Darren Kuyu yeah. is carved mostly into limestone, and that deep under the surface of the earth, limestone is kind of spongy and wet. It usually isn't until limestone gets closer to the surface that it starts to really compress and dry out. So the question is not how did they acquire the tools to build the underground city, because any stone that's harder than limestone would have done the job but you still have to take into account how much effort that would have taken to haul out that much rock and with all the effort oh, effort and it's the only thing we have to do we dedicate weeks months to this because that's what we we were we're literally doing this to survive I, I, what are the, where are they going to go? What, what are they going to do? Go do a different thing? <laughs> I, man, how do we not simply think, okay, what would I do? Literally naked with my family, nothing to me except the knowledge that I would have in that scenario where, you know, you don't have education, you don't have shared knowledge necessarily, or you have limited shared knowledge. At that period of time, you have, uh, you know, not very cogent languages. Um, we, you know, you had essentially tribal languages um, during that period of human history. It's, it's, you know, you're in the middle of the agricultural revolution and, like, the first civilizations. You know what I mean? Like, these are, like, really the first, the first human moments, like, that we consider where we take a step. It's so crazy that human beings think we're so advanced. I, I 
effort that it would have taken to do that thousands of years ago. We have similar brains to them, right? Like their their cognition would be similar to ours. They just wouldn't have had the the, the ability to absorb all the information. It, we're talking ten thousand years, Go. not nearly long enough for significant differences in our capacity to think. Though you would expect evolutionarily, since uh, that's how we work, our brains are probably getting bigger and are definitely smarter than we used to be. Uh, I knew I remembered this right. The city was dug out of a rock type known as tough hardness of around four on the Mohs scale. Soft. Softer than copper coins. You can imagine that underground cities would... Greg is belittling the fact that they were smart enough to know shelter greater than not shelter. Probably be pretty rare. Right. But they're not. Cappadocia... Yeah, they're not rare. Cappadocia alone, located in central Turkey, has over 200 other underground cities and facilities. Yeah. And there are hundreds more ancient facilities. underground facilities around the world. Calling them facilities is so fucking weird. Some so old that even the Romans called them ancient. Roman leaders and generals record using some of these underground facilities to either hide or conduct secret meetings. Only a few years after the city of Derinkuyu was discovered in Turkey, China built an underground facility of their own as a precaution during Cold War tensions in 1969. The United <coughs> Kingdom was maybe one of the first, with the underground city of Berlin built in the 1950s for the same reason. The United States had a series of underground bases and facilities built in the years to follow, some of which are the size of small cities that could potentially have thousands of employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why are you pretending that these people are doing it for the same reason? So these people are making bunkers because of human aggression. Um, the other people were making bunkers of, of, for human aggression, but at a smaller scale, like they weren't thinking apocalypse. They were thinking, I'm going to die, and I just need to be able to defend myself. <laughs> like Cheyenne Mountain is one of the most famous examples. You might remember that from the show and film Stargate. The United States even has an underground highway for trucks. And most underground facilities that the United States has built were either for secrecy or for protection during nuclear conflict. But why did so many ancient people build underground cities? Do you think it was to protect themselves from something bad that might happen? Or do you think something bad did happen 10,000 years ago? Do you think wow. perhaps they were oh, protecting themselves from a massive global disaster? <laughs> sure. Uh, the massive global disaster of humanity having to survive to live. Sure. <laughs> Temperature control, same people, people live in basements. Like, it's, no, it, it, the global disaster. The mic drop is great here. You're right. <clears throat> Excellent mic drop. Maybe it was, maybe it was a global disaster. Maybe, is he going to Noah's Flood us? Let's go. Jake, these are getting dumber. Yeah. What a leap. This. Underground cities are so common, even Australia has at least one. Cooper Pedy, founded in 1915, built as shelter from the intense Australian sun. This region is rich with gemstones, and locals were digging underground anyways, so they decided to stay underground for comfort. To so, cool, dope. Uh, when you see humans doing this ubiquitous ubiquitously across like time like this is do you have the same opinion of like bronze metal being like bronze age like oh my god they had an advancement in technology and everyone adopted the technology like, yeah caves are cool they're abundant um it makes a lot of sense for people to take advantage of this space especially when the stone is you know soft <laughs> Honestly, this feels so much like, ha, people are silly and believe dumb shit. If I was slightly less ethical, I could make a bunch of money. Why not give it a shot? I, I guess. I don't know. I don't think he's making a bunch of money off these. 
Today, about 1,700 people live underground in Cooperpedia, Australia. Recently, around 2018, Finland revealed that they had been building a giant underground city near Helsinki that could shelter 700,000 people. That's more than the entire local population of Helsinki. Finland claims that they began building this city in 2018 as a form of protection from either attack or nuclear conflict. But the network of tunnels that the city is connected to is a lot older than that. Because of their proximity to the Soviets, Finland has had underground facilities since the 1950s as well. We can build a massive underground facility designed to hold 700,000 people today mm -hmm. because we have large equipment that allows us to dig nearly infinitely without running out of energy. No, but... Uh Sure. Uh, they had the technology to dig a smaller city, a fraction of the size you're talking about. Yep. Correct today. But using only hand tools 10,000 years ago, it would have taken a colossal amount of effort to dig out that much stone Did? to build a massive underground city for 20,000 people. Yeah, and they didn't have to... Okay, so it's a combination of there was natural caverns that they made bigger and modified, so they didn't have to actually dig out each individual moment, and also it was easy to dig out. Yes, so they, they did that. That's exactly what happened. Correct. During the Stone Age. This is essentially yeah. a mystery on the same level as Gobekli Tepe. No, it's not. It's not a mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery in that we don't, like, it's a historical mystery because they don't, like, write stuff down. But it's not like, fucking, I, I just can't comprehend how they could have accomplished such a feat. It's, it, it's a technology done throughout. You could do it now. People, you just said one guy was doing it himself in his basement. It's such a thing, man. You can, you can dig. How did they do this? Why would they do this? This is Shelter. the oldest example that we have. Something doesn't make sense here. Turkey is home to several underground cities. It As Google sense. puts it, nobody knows for sure, but there are about 200 underground cities, settlements, and cave complexes in Cappadocia. Like, holy mother of God, that's insane. There are a lot of theories as to why there are so many underground cities in Turkey, one of which being that Tur the the. For the same reason the Furby got popular. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, they, they didn't know how to do as many other things. Like this is, this is, it's a fad of technology. It is a technological advancement that a lot of people took advantage of because they were very tough. Shovels never heard of them. I mean, literally they had tools and shit. They had basic, like you're going to see. As they dig and stuff, this is what leads to basic metallurgy that will lead to the next advancement. Like, this is all part of it, man. They're going to find that rocks are harder than some other rocks. Why is that hot? Throw it. They, you know, it ends up in the fire, uh, ends up hot, melts out. Now it's a useful tool. Ooh, what if we did this on purpose? Ding, 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 ding. And then we're using this metal for that. Like, this is literally how it works, man. And we find out, oh, jewels are things that we like and prize. And they start taking these jewels that have no other purpose and putting them on themselves while they live under these caves. And then when they leave, now we have all these caves that people still remember generationally throughout multiple, you know, <clears throat> multiple tribes of people. And we, you can see this happen. It's, it's just anthropology, man. How can we not take natural logical steps? How can you not just, okay, ask, how would you do this? You would hit something with, you, you would hit this rock with something harder than it to break it. How hard is this to do? The urge of our monkey brains to dig hole actually led to metallurgy. That's crazy. Yes. Of course. <laughs> the only way to get to metallurgy is to discover metal. <laughs> you know? 
you could see it probably throughout different places where they're like, oh, I f maybe I found some metal, but it's always they 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 make A to B. They're like, oh, metal comes from the ground. We should get get it from there. Everybody knows this. <laughs> Kids know this now. Video games teach you this now. So, but but like this wasn't common knowledge in the Stone Age. Right? And so this technology comes out. People are like, I fucking... There was this city, dude. They had a city. And, and, and Grog, your friend, is like, What's a city? Eats a raw deer leg. And he's like, well, I'll tell you what. I'll, sh I'll show you. And then we go. And they're like, whoa, can we join your city? And yeah, you know, happens, man. Children yearn for the mines. There was a time when the mines were the best. Oh, we're gonna go to the mines But that that passed pretty quickly Turkey was always under constant threat of attack So they probably developed a preservation mindset as part of their culture They made underground complexes to protect themselves from the Greeks the Romans the Persians the It's not just protection like it is though like shelter is inherently protection yes but it's not like this apocalyptic paranoid thing it's literally practical <laughs> it's it's a it's a surplus of having the resource of soft stone around you and not other stuff to build homes out of so you make what make do dude Scythians, you name it. But we can sort of reason why some of those facilities would exist today because they existed within the same time period as <coughs> other civilizations that had a conquer mindset. But why is there a 10,000 year old city designed to hold 20,000 people? I've already explained this. What no, the no, hell were they place. hiding from 10,000 years ago? <laughs> The world? The earth? Everything within the earth? The other people in the earth? The animals? The weather? The climate? The people? <laughs> the, the flora? The fauna? How many things can I say? All of the things within the earth. All of it. Just the whole all of it. Where are they hiding from? You ever been outside, Greg? How long? What's the longest time you spent outside without any access to shelter? The longest time. Like you couldn't walk into a gas station. You couldn't you couldn't hide under a bridge. Any shelter at all. Not long. You couldn't fucking dip under a tree. Not long. <laughs> These are fucking rock fields sometimes you're talking about. They're like, oh, we'll go here. We know that we can, you know walk from this you know this place might not have any natural resources that we need for immediate survival might have good access to water or something but nearby we have this this and this and we can go hunt here we can gather here and we can bring stuff back here we can farm at our home now uh, we can till the soil and create something you know this is think think okay i know i keep repeating myself here but the main question that i'm leading up to in this video is what if we're wrong about how old darren kuyu is Rock is really hard to date. What if Darren Kuyu was built before Gobekli Tepe? About 12,000 years ago, there was a massive global event that people call the Younger Dryas event, where sea levels rose rapidly and the human population dropped to about 10,000 males overnight. 10,000 males? Uh, Ancient Apocalypse. Uh, so I think if the if we're flooding, the last place I'm going is in a cave. Personally, um, um, overnight. So I, 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 I don't know. That sounds that sounds not true, but uh oh. People have also speculated that Gobekli Tepe, dating back about 12,000 years ago, was the home of the survivors of that massive global cataclysm. Well, what if that massive... <clears throat> Younger Dryas, which occurred circa 29 or 12,900 uh, 12, to 11,700 years um, BP, before present taking jesus out of it oh no uh, uh oh i have a i have a popcorn in me damn it 
Uh, was a return to glacial conditions which temporarily reversed the gradual climatic warming after the last glacial maximum, uh, which lasted from 27,000 uh, to 20,000. Uh, Younger Dryas was the late stage of the Pleistocene epoch that spanned from 25, 8, wow, 25, 2 million, I was expecting a thousand here. Um, wow, that spanned from a decent amount of time. I perceived the current warmer Holocene epoch. Uh, the Younger Dryas was the most severe and longest lasting of the several interruptions of the warming of the Earth's climate. It was in, preceded by the late glacial interstadial. Uh, <laughs> timing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Global effects? Uh, are we seeing human issues? I'm not seeing... Maybe, maybe not right now. Uh, other features include global effects, um, global mean temperature. I'm not seeing any sort of population claim. I feel like they would add that, right? The the claim of of the population being significantly impacted. Uh, uh, you know, just climate change, replacement of forest in Scandinavia with glacial tundra, glaciation, or increased snow in mountain ranges around the world, formation of s Salification layers in what is this? A Laos? A Laos is a clastic, predominantly silt sized sediment that is formed by the accumulation of wind blown dust. Wow. More dust in the atmosphere from the deserts in Asia. Decline in evidence of the Natufian hunter gatherer permanent settlers in the Levant, suggesting a reversion to more mobile way of life. Is this the Mediterranean? I think it is. Yeah. Uh, Nutafian's interesting. Nutafian culture. Late Epipaleolithic archaeological culture of Neolithic prehistory. Levant in Western Asia. Wait, does this look Western Asia? Oh, it's not. I was wrong. That looks a lot like the Mediterranean right there. What is this? Am I crazy? Yeah, I guess this isn't, this isn't part of it at all. Anyway, now I'm on my history interested, and I'm just really deeply interested in this, and I'm not finding any claims of this. Uh, end of the younger. I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing population claims of the Earth. I mean, this is just a Wikipedia article, but I, the the second thing when I looked it up, it was Younger Dryas uh, theory was down here. Hypothesis proposed the air burst of impact comet. Uh oh, are we? Are we uh, uh oh, is he gonna get into comet theory? Okay. The underground city of Darren Kuyu was actually built first before Gobekli Tepe. And the survivors that stayed in that underground city then moved to Gobekli Tepe and built their temples there. One of the pieces of evidence that speculators like to point to are the unique designs and artwork. So you could see a decline in global temperatures lead people uh, to want, um, you know, a better, a better accommodations, but like, <laughs> that's a dick. Uh, none of this, none of this is, is strange. Like this is just humans. This isn't like a oh, big mystery. Graded into Gobekli Tepe's T pillars. As I described in an earlier video, cool. they seem to commemorate a global cataclysm. The people of Gobekli Tepe seemed to record their memory of surviving the sun's wrath. Or if I'm wrong about that, what if at very least those two ancient sites connect in some way? Gobekli Tepe and Darren Kuyu. Okay, it's fun to speculate as to the true nature of Darren Kuyu. Does that giant massive underground city correlate with that apocalyptic event that I talked about in an earlier video? That's the question you all expected me to ask, right? And I- Why did, He does this. Sometimes he'll be like, you guys are way ahead of me on where the obvious logic of this is going. And like, no, I didn't expect this at all. Maybe I, I feel like we watch all of these. Am I behind on something? How is he always saying this kind of stuff? And I'm never, I'm always whiplash from it. Like, no, I did not expect you to make this leap in logic.
I could try to make an argument that Darren Kuyu was dated incorrectly and it's actually 2,000 years older than they tell us, that it predates Gobekli Tepe, but I'm not going to do that. It could be 8,000 years oh, old. Oh, wow, you're not going to just deny the consensus on the archaeological evidence? Cool. Old. It could be 9,000 years old. Who knows? But we also have to accept that it's possible that we'll never know how old either of those cities really are because the best we can do is carbon date organic material that's left behind. Organic material like food or clothing. And most of the stuff that we're going to find is going to correlate with later times that those cities were occupied. They're not gonna find like old food waste or clothing from like the earliest periods in that city. So ultimately, it doesn't matter which one came first, Gobekli Tepe or Darren Kuyu, because they're both the oldest ancient cities of their kind that we've ever found. They were both more advanced than thousands of cultures that came after them. How can you say they're more advanced? Like, what is more advanced about what they did? What advancement are you, like, digging? Go. They look nice? You like how they look? <laughs> he didn't look it up. Yeah, I don't think he did. Who don't, Kippy, you're right. I think he only looked up his, like, conspiracy sources. For, like, 6,000 years or more. So it doesn't really matter if Darren Kuyu is 10,000 years old and is younger than Gobekli Tepe because it's still one of the most technologically impressive feats ever achieved by humanity, period. It's the not. achievement is basically unexplainable. So the question remains, What? how did they acquire the knowledge to pull off this feat? Of course- To do it, they did it by doing the thing. They dug hole, <laughs> they dug. This is not, how the evidence all over the world all over it we have cities like this and you're like how do they do this one egypt has a lot of underground tunnels as well you're still more it. than an entire city's worth we don't know the details of the extent of the network of tunnels and underground chambers in egypt Man. but we know that they had the technology and the desire to dig underground in fact ancient egyptians built a massive underground labyrinth with thousands of hallways and chambers how is this evidence that which and this is clearly more sophisticated how is this not evidence that they could have made the holes that they dug before the ones that you say are unexplainable one of the most mysterious historical anomalies in egypt the labyrinth was so massive and intricate that's a dope labyrinth dude that is dope so it it, it labyrinths. So if you just enter here, you're just fucked. You just don't go anywhere. The only the only labyrinth entrance. You can't you can't even get into this thing. This is fucked. This entrance doesn't lead to anywhere. This isn't a real labyrinth. Tricks, tricks and deceit. I say. It. Greek historians described it as being an architectural marvel that rivaled Looks the like a computer. Uh oh, oh shit, it's a it's a computer chip. It's a big computer chip. Battery, battery, computer chip, computer battery, computer chip. We nailed it. You got it. That's what it is. You're right. This looks like a kid's placement on an Egyptian themed restaurant. Hold on. The Great Pyramid. God, I wish I could see it. An underground facility that's more impressive than the Great Pyramid? Going back to Turkey, there was another ancient ah. underground city that was also discovered in a novel way called Ozkanok. There was a farmer that was struggling with water management on one of his fields, and he noticed that the water was draining into a hole. When he opened it up, he discovered that his farm field was hiding a massive metropolis. 
This was in 1972, Tough. and they've determined that the city out. of Oskanok is somewhere around 4,000 years old. Yeah. The craziest part is that the city is part of an underground network of cities that were all interconnected through tunnels. These people were set up to operate entirely underground for an extended time. Yeah. The belief is that the city of Oskanok, along with a few others like it in the region, were built as long-term emergency shelters. But not much. I don't understand this emergency shelter claim. Which is really known about the history of most of these underground structures. And that's just the point of this video is that it's a huge mystery. Like, I think we can reason why a handful of underground facilities would get built throughout history. He keeps calling them facilities! He, so he could invoke some kind of Area 51-ness to them or something? Bro. <laughs> My cave is not a facility. Nobody you tell Greg about old Chicago. <sighs> History, but it makes no sense that there are over 200 underground facilities in one region encompassing the entirety of human history. That's not... What? How is that... <laughs> I don't understand. It's not weird to find clusters of the same technology from an anthropological standpoint. You make the opposite argument when it comes to pyramids. You're like, I mean, how could people have imagined to stack Go. rocks symmetrically? How could they have imagined to symmetrically stack rocks? Um, notice how all of these emergency facilities are all made in places with very little tree growth, meaning that building wooden structures is impractical. Also, that building underground is where... It is cool and would keep people comfy. Yeah, don't talk about that. <clears throat> I hope you really have a fantastic day. Midnight and all night. 30 months. Seems like Greg has reached Elon Musk levels of divorce. Dad slash my girlfriend left me. True. What the actual hell is going on? I don't think people appreciate what it would have taken to live underground thousands of years ago before the invention of electricity, uh -huh. before light, before plumbing. It would have been awful to live that way for extended periods of time. Dark, depressing. How do you... Uh, it wouldn't have necessarily been dark and depressing. They did have fire. <laughs> they, they, torches were things, fires were things. Uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, just natural light is absolutely a thing. That's just living inside, yeah. Poop going whole. I mean, there was windows in a lot of these. You saw them. Keep your torches lit for days, weeks, months at a time. Candles. I don't even understand how they were always confident that they would even be able to see. How do you cook for 20,000 people every single day without filling the cave with smoke? I bet if we walked through, like, if I, I guarantee you, if you went through this space where the cooking took place makes sense, <laughs> right? And if you absolutely had to, you could make your food on the outside of it and filter it in. Like, that's where the food's coming from anyway, is outside. You would imagine that there was probably outside of the caves a settlement as well. Like, <laughs> yeah. C caves aren't, all, like, fucking sealed, necessarily. They have vents and there's, you know, all sorts of stuff. Uh, wind goes through them. They could have had constant wind flow based on the structure. Uh, you know, it, who knows? There's all sorts of ways that this could have been solved. Yeah, man. Smoked and salted food. Yeah, I mean. Go. Raw foods. Agriculture. <laughs> Can't grow trees in caves, so ancient aliens, obviously. The same uh, why you deliver air and vet gases from mines. Yeah. Even just keeping enough food for everyone would have been a monumental feat. Water would have been a nightmare so to... Why? What do you think these 20,000 people are doing? Also, capable of 20,000 people doesn't mean they had a population of such, but... You know. Uh, what do you think these people are doing every day? What do you think their jobs are? You know? Food. Farming. This was post-agricultural revolution, or uh, right in the middle of it. 
to deal with, but they had wells and cisterns. They had wells and cisterns, and, and he's like, how did they handle smoke? 10,000 years ago, they knew to have wells and cisterns. How 10,000 years ago, they knew that water was something they wanted. And when they dug, they got water out of the ground. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe 10,000 years ago, they had thirst. How did they figure all this out? On their first try. What do you mean, first try? Millions of years of human evolution. <laughs> what? This is so stupid. How I cannot believe that he is like this. History started ten thousand. History started after ten thousand years ago. History has to be written. Um, uh, although I guess you could call it recorded history, but you know, a real stickler would be like, "Well, history is actually when you record it." Uh, Tacitus, first history. Not dying to everything has been nothing but trial and error. Yeah, I mean, it's just so silly to not understand how this works. The city of Darren Kuyu had multiple types of rooms with obvious purposes, like kitchens, bathrooms. There are very it had kitchens few and bathrooms. And did you just see this? How did they handle the smoke, guys? How did they handle the smoke and the fires? How would they do this? It's depicting lights in here. How did they do this? What... Oh no. It has fucking shafts that go up? That's just crazy. Isn't the earth only 6,000 years old? Whoa, how did they build before that? And Kuyu had multiple types of rooms with obvious purposes, like kitchens, yep. bathrooms. Go. There are very. Is that a shitter? You wide open. Dude, I would feel so fucking. This is so you can hold yourself up while you're shitting. Oh, fuck. Dude, what if you fell in? Oh, no. Can you imagine having a bad shit and dying because you fell in the shitter? Bases. Almost everything is just an endless tunnel to everywhere. There would have been little personal space, too. All I'm saying is it would have been difficult. Little personal space, you say? But I thought they were so advanced. Look at these advanced tunnels! So much forethought and planning involved. So many things you have to get right to make it work. Just so that you can see and you don't choke to death. So, so it's crazy that they're showing, like, they got they had natural light, they had ventilation, they had access to water, and if they had a bad shit, they had a risk of slipping into the toilet and dying. So why were underground cities so popular throughout history? I do have one more example that's always a lot of fun. The island of Malta is absolutely saturated with ancient ruins spanning the entire history of humanity. Located in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, Malta likely had human visitors and inhabitants for as long as humans were able to build the most rudimentary rafts and boats. Some of the megalithic structures in Malta are believed to be older than the Great Pyramids of Egypt and older than Stonehenge. There wow. Um, another example of why all of this is possible and interesting and not just a conspiracy theory. <laughs> there are a lot of local legends about giants in Malta. Well, giants as a everybody's... cultural phenomenon are yeah, so he's... accepted in Malta <laughs> that people talk about them there as if they're just a fact of history. There are a great many mysterious structures and what was what is a fact of history? What? Hold on. Let me make sure. Henge. There are a lot of local legends about giants in Malta. Oh, okay. Giants, as a cultural phenomenon, are so accepted in Malta that people talk about them there as if they're just a fact of history. Uh, no, they don't. Um, <laughs> no, they do not. <laughs> Heard a lot of things about Malta. I've never heard that they, uh, regularly talk about giants that exist and are real. <clears throat>
There are Malta. a great many mysterious structures and tombs discovered in Malta that have been attributed yeah, to giants. And I've heard a ton of stories of people finding giant remains on their properties while exploring around. These aren't simple structures either. These are intricate complexes built with purpose and aesthetic in mind. The temples were not designed for mass worship. They appear to be designed for a single priest to perform religious rites one at a time and their culture was matriarchal. Worshipping mostly women, there are a lot of statues venerating female goddesses and- Dude. Thick mommies. Leaders. One of the most famous underground facilities in the world are the tunnels known as the Hal Safelini Hypogeum. Hypogeum is a Greek word meaning underground facility. This facility is considered a temple. Most of it is carved in solid bedrock, which is mind blowing. And the parts of the. It's mind blowing. How did they do it? Well, they dug into it. That's how. They dug it. <laughs> temple that aren't tunneled out are still megalithic this isn't bedrock wait what are you talking about how do you, what do you mean he said it was bedrock you're saying that he would give us bad information upper crust bedrock structures the hypogeum is supposed to be around six is he saying is it hypogeum why is that happening the fuck why did it show chat that was weird. Did you see that? Hypogeum. 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 It's thought to have been a sanctuary or a necropolis. I'm, uh, the Hypogeum is thought to have been a sanctuary and necropolis, and the estimated remains of more than 7,000 people documented there. The Maltese. Nothing remains. Burial chambers, temple structure, residence niche. In the or called the Oracle Room was possibly designed to project chanting or drumming throughout the rest of the hypogeum. Ooh. They were like, ooh, this echoes. I like echoes. Did he just, did he only grab these off of Wikipedia? Um, a small percentage of the skulls have an abnormal cranial elongation similar to the precious skulls from ancient Egypt, feeling speculation by the people who occupied Hypogeum and their practices and beliefs. The Hypogeum is constructed entirely and underground consists of three superimposed levels hewn into soft globorhina limestone. Not, in fact, bedrock, with its halls and chambers interconnected through a labyrinthine series of steps, into lintels, and doorways. Um, the upper level is thought to have had been occupied first, with the middle and lower levels expanded and excavated later. Some of the middle chambers appeared to share stylistic characteristics with the contemporaneous megalithic temples found across Mal Malta. So, um, it seems that this took place in stages, like is expected. And uh, the lower levels were the things that survived, because of course they were, um, were hidden from the elements and stuff, and then collapsed eventually and were hidden. Uh, this is pretty normal stuff. Rad, though. Pretty rad. So, again, not uh, unexplainable. This is uh, deeply explainable. This isn't bedrock. 6,000 years old, which places it around the same time as the civilization of Sumeria. Whoa. Malta is an ab- Su Sumeria, wow. But they built above ground, that's different. Absolutely incredible place, and I'd love to talk about it more in the future. A lot of amazing architecture, a lot of amazing legends and stories about giants. And it's also home to one of the most fascinating elongated skull cool. fragments that we've ever found. The Maltese authorities removed this skull fragment from public viewing almost- I've seen the mechanism, yeah. That's immediate Maltese women I worship are Chara, Ira, Lasco, and Dest- I don't know who these people are, but I'm glad that you, uh, you worship them.
immediately after it was discovered. So we only really have a couple of photographs taken by Dr. Anton Mifsud, one of the researchers uh -oh. who worked on this excavation. But we can clearly see that this fragment is much longer than the normal sized God, skulls behind it. And most importantly, it's missing the sagittal suture line down the center exactly like the elongated skulls in Peru. Exactly like them, looks this, exactly the same. The elongated skull fragment was supposedly excavated from the hypogeum. And that would be wild. You know, if I were to just like suddenly get amnesia, and I start looking around trying to figure out who I am, I'd see that guy and be like, am I Daft Punk? What? Everyone clap. Everyone clap. But the 10,000 year old underground city of Derinkuyu in Turkey Go. still wins as being the most amazing underground architecture ever discovered. This Tell us some jokes. city is so amazing that it seems like a miracle that it even exists at all. So fascinating that it creates more questions than it answers. Why did our ancestors feel the need to live in such an elaborate underground city 10,000 years ago. What? It's such an elaborate, an elaborate city. Hold on. Here's one. Asia. Down the center, exactly like the elongated skulls in Peru. And they tell us that this elongated skull, you know, if I were to just like suddenly get amnesia, this will work. And I start looking around trying to figure out who I am. I'd see that guy and be like, am I Daft Punk? Maybe this? <laughs> yeah. But the 10,000 year old underground city of Derinkuyu in Turkey still wins as being the most amazing underground architecture ever discovered. The city is so amazing that it seems like a miracle that it even exists at miracle, all. Dude. So fascinating that it creates right. more questions than it answers. It Why did our ancestors feel the need to live so, in- So, uh, yeah, he, he said it again. He, he's still a save before. Uh, I don't, well, does he say anything during his Patreon? shit wait hold on he's putting up his patreon let's see let's see real quick maybe what's he being skeptical about uh phew. Great question, Devin. Such an elaborate That's underground an question. city. What is he skeptical about? He's skeptical of of history and anthropology and archaeological evidence. 10,000 years ago. What happened back then? And how did they even know how to build something like that in the first place? Uh -huh. Where did they get the knowledge to do this? Where did they get the knowledge? They learned it. They learned to do it. Step one, dig. Step two, do it for a long time. Do anything from 10,000 hours, dude. Like, this is a, a, a group of people that were all working towards similar goals, man. Yeah. Uh, dude, he, I, not a joke, not a joke. In these early cultures, in the agricultural revolution, as we move forward, uh, you see a lot of communism involved. These people are dumbfounded by what we can do when we work together in a commune. The advanced, all these advanced societies that they talk about are literally just communes. I'm just saying. Name one that isn't. All of them are. If it's true that Darren Kuyu is connected to Gobekli Tepe and was the sheltering home of the people who survived the cataclysm during the Younger Dryas event, then it's possible that this tells us that humanity was much more advanced before the Ice Age than we could possibly imagine. Now, they just they simply were not more advanced before the Ice Age. Uh, wrong. Incorrect. Oops, what did I do there? Oh, never mind. I, I accidentally got rid of the Daddy Jake thing. It's okay. Uh, incorrect. 
Armored Skeptic is skeptical only of reality. 